I'd like to go over how to make a handle on a cup. Now there are lots of ways to make handles and there are lots of kinds of handles. There are handles that are really functional, there are handles that are very decorative, there are handles that express an idea. So I'd like to go over a few different techniques, particularly functional handles. So to start with, when you make your cup, you could just use the slab itself for the handle. So this was wrapped around a form and there was extra clay and I pierced it. Handle could be a very simple strap handle. Just very, very simple. Think about how many fingers you want to put into the handle. It's a big cup, three fingers. Smaller cup, two fingers. Very small cup, one finger. So, think about that. Now, a good handle tends to taper. It goes from wider to thinner. Wider to thinner. And the reason for that is most of the weight is held up at the top. When you grab it, you grab it with your thumb and your finger, and depending on the cup, it might be one, two, three fingers. But the weight is up there, and the balance is down here. So to make a comfortable handle, it goes from thicker at the top down thinner at the bottom. Rules don't always apply. This one's even all the way through. It's still pretty comfortable. It has a little ledge down here that fits my hand. This one, purely decorative, but it works. Not as comfortable. It kind of digs in down here, and I don't have as good a grip at the top. I still like this cup. I'm tempted to hold it this way. I like to look at it. Now, when you attach a handle, sometimes there's just not quite enough clay there. It just doesn't look strong enough, and it may be perfectly strong. It may not look strong enough, so you can add clay. You could add a ball of clay and squish it in. It gives your thumb a nice place to go. This one just has a little coil of clay added. It could be blended in. I left it here because I kind of like the variation that happens. You could even go all the way around. This is like a handle sampler. Which handle do you use? It's a handle like this that's round all the way down, not very comfortable. Handle like this sticks out too far. The weight wants to fall down. This is at a bit of an angle would be better for a lefty. This one's a little more decorative. This one has that coil around the top. This one goes over the top edge. Be careful of that because when you're drinking, it may poke you in the eye. So think about this. Think about it when you put it on because you really can't try the handle until you actually have the piece fired. So, a very simple handle. You get some plastic clay. And just roll a coil. You do that with your fingers straight. And you just let it roll and to make it longer. Move your fingers out. Remember, these shrink, so you may want to leave it this thick. I have a coil. It's about as thick as I want it at the very top of the handle. So what do you do with this? Well, there's a handle. 
Not a very interesting one. Take off a piece and to taper it so it goes thinner at one side, keep this side the same. Well, find the thick side. Well, either way. And then just roll one end. Move your hand out. You can see how it, the coil gets thinner at one side. Let it make a nice curve. And there's a handle. Rounded, not as comfortable as one that might be a little flat. Take it. Take your rolling pin. Not too much pressure at this end and a little more pressure at that end. Just roll it. Tap down the edges so they're flat. Much nicer handle. I think I'm going to keep this as a possibility. Now, what you want is a beautiful continuous curve. You don't want it lumpy in there. So you could just let it bend naturally like this and set it out on the table and let it firm up and then cut it to size. You could also put it around something that's round. And this is good if you're making a lot of mugs that are all exactly the same. Make all the handles this way. Another variation on that handle. I'm going to taper it down. Put texture into it. So one way to do that is to take a stick and roll the corner of the stick on the piece. So I have this happening. Now, if I bet this, it might crack it. It's getting a little bit dry. So before you bend it, take a damp sponge and wet it just a little bit. Then you can bend it into shape. And see, it still wants to crack just a little bit, but that's not deep. It's, it'll be fine. I'm going to flatten this out a little bit. It's still a little bit, bit round for my taste. What you do is just like when you make a slab and you throw it down, throw your handle down, and you throw it down so the wide end hits first and it'll stretch. Soften it up just a little bit so I don't get the cracking. And I think I'll pass on this handle. It's got some edges there. Play. Don't just stick with one th idea. Experiment. What if I put lines into the coil? Just pressing these in. I'll dampen it a little bit. Ah, I like that one better. I think I'll keep this one on here for now. I've got several cups. I want to make some choices. Now another kind of handle you can make would be a slab. So you little thick at one end. Cut out your handle. So, all pretty much the same thickness. And then, I'm 
going to roll it flatter and thinner at the other side. This is a little big, or maybe for a bigger cup. I'm going to cut it down just a little bit more. Now, when you do something like this, be aware those edges are sharp. Right up along here is going to be sharp, so you do need to round that off. Thin this out just a little bit more down at the bottom. So to round it off, just take your sponge, go over it a couple times. So my finger's going over that edge. Let it take a natural curve. There's another handle. Take that slab. You have a cup that has a texture. Okay, how about texturing the slab? Got a little bit thinner. I'll trim its size. and I'm going to taper it. Kind of like a like a carrot. Remember the sharp edges? Round them off. So, I have several handles to pick from now. So from these handles, I have to put it on a cup. So cup, ball up your piece, your clay, and get your cup. I've had this covered up, so brought it to a nice leather hard and covered it tight. To try to keep that moisture so it's a, a, a good leather hard. I can, can't quite bend it anymore. I want to clean this up a little bit. The top edge. It's a little bit iffy. Find a flat surface, put a little water on it. I use a piece of glass. In school, we have stainless steel countertops. This will work. Just, it's like grinding a lens. Just go around and around and around a bit until it hits all the way around. There's a little bit of aluminum that's coming off on this, but that won't, won't matter. It doesn't affect the pot at all. So now I've got a really flat rim. It's a little bit sharp. What you do is take a piece of chamois leather, it's a little piece of leather, and go around it. Round off that edge. Don't forget the bottom. It's sharp down there too. What I usually do is come and just put a bevel on it. Just come back and at about a 45 degree angle, go down at about a quarter of an inch. Now there's a good reason for doing this. 
besides making it look a little nicer, when you go ahead to glaze the piece, you can glaze right down to the top of that bevel. And when you turn this over, you won't see the unglazed area. If this went straight down like the tip, top of this cup does right now, you'd have to leave eighth to a quarter of an inch of pot unglazed. Same thing, just round, dampen a little bit, round off that edge. What did I just do? I, I didn't smack it. I tapped it and the bottom went in a little bit. Reason for that is now it's going to sit flat. Sign it. Round off that bottom. Now I'm ready for the handle. I have to choose which handle to use. I have a selection here. Now these have been sitting here for a minute, so they're holding their shape nicely. So I've got this one. I'll trim it down just a little bit. Now, over the top, can hit your face. Right up at the top, it's hard to pick up and hard to use. Just a little bit down, it works well. Look at your design. There's a perfect spot for a handle here where it's smooth. So I'm going to go right there. Now this is flat. This is curved. I have to round this off. Tap it. And this does two things. Besides getting that curve just right, it compresses a little bit. Now, if I choose this handle, I think I will. But let me show you a couple others first. Got this one. A little more decorative. It's still soft enough that it can bend. Now I've got quite a tail here. I could keep that, wind it up and make it like a vine that's coming up the side of the piece. So there's that one. There's the strap. Now this one's still really soft. Look what's happening. It's kind of getting lumpy and bumpy. Something like this, besides going straight on, which is a little bit thin, I could flatten it up, but you could also put it on like this. Sets it apart a little bit. So this one, I think I'm going to keep the handle simple and go with the first, first option. To attach the handle, scratch the handle and mark where you're going to be putting it. Maybe a quarter of an inch down, and I'll mark the bottom, and then scratch, score where you're going to be attaching it. Score the handle. Now this is slip, the liquid clay. A couple daubs will do you. Support the cup on the inside and push it on so that slip oozes out of the edges. Come down here and let it make a natural curve. See how it has that nice round continuous curve? Put it on at the bottom. Now I could I'm going to wet this just a little bit so it'll bend. You know, you could do something funny like that. I don't like those. It kind of gets in my way. Personal preference. You can trim it off. 
Traditionally, what people would do is they take their thumb and smear it into the pot. I like to put a little stamp there. A good stamp is the end of the paintbrush. Makes a little dot. Think about how the glaze is going to do it. Now, I want this to curve up just a little bit, so I wet my finger, and I'm persuading it into that nice shape. Look at it straight on and make sure that it's not angled out. And then come back and work that seam a little bit. You can use your fingers. You could use a tool. Because where that slip is oozed out, that extra slip that's there, it shrinks more and you get a little cracking at that joint. It won't be It'll be a good connection on the inside where you scored both the handle and the cup, but on the edge you'll have a tiny little crack. If you compress it now, come back and push it in. You may even want to put some lines in it. I'm going to do that to kind of tie it into the design. You won't have the cracking. So there's a handle. Now to do something like this, Take a little piece of clay, make a ball, put your thumb on it, and squish it down. So that would be like this cup. If it's a really thin area, you may want to put some clay around the outside. Think about how it's attached. This has some little extra clay happening out here, so it looks stronger. This will be up to you. Remember, don't go all the way down to the tabletop with the handle. You don't want it touching the tabletop because Remember, this acts almost like a river when you get glaze on it. Get a thick glaze on there, it may run and run right off and stick right there. I don't know how many cups students have had where they've had that handle stick at just right at that junction. So be aware of that. When I had my shop, I had an engineer come in and he'd say, are you sure that handle's strong enough down there? So I started screwing it on. So I put a, the end of the stick on and then just took and impressed another line. And it looks like a screw now. Just finishes it off. All those little details will set your pieces apart from everybody else's. So have fun and make some beautiful cups. Remember, oh, before I say goodbye today, make sure you cover this up. I've got wet clothes. Plastic clay, leather hard clay, wet clay in between. You want all those clays to equalize and moisture. So just take and cover it up for a while. Let it even out. Another thing you can do if you're in a little bit of a hurry is just turn it over. The air can't get into the inside as well as the outside, and it'll dry a little bit more evenly. I always take it, wrap it up, uncover it the next day, and let it dry, and it'll be ready to be fired once it's bone dry. So, thank you.